We're good. We're in? Thank you. Good evening. Welcome to the special meeting of the Warwick School Committee. Uh, this is a virtual meeting, Tuesday, December 15, 2020. This time, call the meeting to order. And we vote to go into closed session for discussion and or action regarding those items of business exempt from open meetings under general laws of Rhode Island 42485, A1, A2, A4, A8, and A9. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The ayes have it. We're going into executive.
Hello? Hello. I couldn't unmute there for a minute. Um, I guess I guess nobody heard anything. All right, I'll do this again. Um, welcome to the Warwick School Committee special virtual meeting of Tuesday, December 15th, 2020. Pursuant to executive order number 20-05, issued by the governor of the state of Rhode Island, this meeting will be conducted by electronic communication only. Members of the public wishing to access this meeting may do so at https colon double backslash y-o-u-t-u period b as in boy e backslash y-p-z-r-a i-7-4 o-f-a it's time to call the meeting to order please stand for the pledge mr testa please lead us I pledge allegiance to the flag Aye. of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Testa. May I have a vote, please? Motion to seal minutes of the executive session. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The ayes have it. Votes taken in executive session. There were none. And at this time, we will move on to public comment. Ms. Bonin. Thank you, Madam Chair and members of the school committee. I have five public comments this evening. My first one is from Maya Sherman. Dear members of the school committee, Superintendent Thornton and administration. I would like to thank the building maintenance staff, HR, aides and principals for working hard the last few months. It is concerning to announce full distance learning without a date for a return to in-person school. While other districts have opted to DL right before the holidays to relieve staffing shortages, they were able to return children to school five days a week earlier than Warwick and assign DL teachers for students at home. I am grateful to the teachers who are doing everything they can to keep children engaged. However, two times a week is not nearly sufficient for any type of learning. We cannot continue the hybrid plan of in-person school just two days a week and distance independent learning for our elementary students. While I am aware our middle and high school kids cannot fully return, they are also desperate for in-person learning. We are in mid-December and the date for full in-person return keeps pushing back further. Nobody said this was going to be easy. Operating schools in a pandemic is an insurmountable task. Distance learning is too. It is crystal clear how inappropriate it is for the youngest learners. I will remind you all, all that the social, emotional, psychological effects of staying home for all children and their families are continuing to worsen, not to mention the mental and physical abuse that many children are facing because they aren't being given a choice for in-person learning. We deserve to know exactly when our children are going back to elementary school in full and when our older learners will have an opportunity to attend school. To evaluate a return to school in January is inadequate. We need to know before the holiday break, not in the new year. Teachers also deserve to know for planning purposes. We are in the business of keeping the customer happy, said Superintendent Thornton. The children should always come first. This administration and school committee needs to stop holding them back. My next comment is from Sarah Neal. I'm sure you'll be getting a fair number of comments thanking you for returning the district to full distance learning. I won't be doing that in my letter. Thanking the school committee and Dr. Thornton would imply they did something to earn my appreciation, but frustration is all I've felt since the beginning of this school year. 
Instead, I am focusing my comments on when children will return to school full time and what efforts have been made to quantify the amount of learning lost for half of the school year, either in the hybrid or distance learning models. First, it is not good enough to leave the return of in-person learning open-ended. If history has shown us anything, it's that this body is too slow to act. So a tentative start date must be said. I hope this body learns from past mistakes in acting too slowly, as more in-person learning could have happened in months where cases were low instead of bringing them back when cases are high. Second, school committee members must know how far behind our kids are falling this year. So I call upon the administration to quantify and release this information immediately. Only then can this body fully truly understand and appreciate what parents have been saying for months, which is now reinforced by the teacher survey results released last meeting. Elementary teachers are just as concerned that kids aren't engaging virtually and they can't properly assess where the children are in their scholastic development. Is that finally enough for you to see how your react inaction is impacting our kids? Because I'm afraid it'll be more of the same until you stop ignoring the long-term negative impacts distance learning will have on our kids that could take years to undo. There's still time to make it right, but action must be taken now. Please get students back on the right track by bringing them back to school. My next comment is from Jen Goff. Dear Woke School Committee and Administration, I am writing to you to express my concerns over the recent transition to full distance learning. Since August, we as parents have listened to countless concerns from the committee about the ongoing virus. The most important concerns we should be hearing is from the parents. Yesterday, RIDE issued a staggered return plan for in-person learning with a definitive date of January 15, 2021, being the final date to return. Please let our students in all grades in Warwick return to in-person learning by mid-January. My son is receiving an hour a day of virtual instruction by his teacher with an hour of work for him to complete independently. This is not sufficient, nor is it a fair, equitable education that he and many others so desperately deserve. Our students need a definitive date voted on for in-person learning, and it needs to be immediate because the longer distance learning continues, the further our students fall behind. Please make all trimester report card data as well as student attendance transparent in all future committee meetings so that the public is able to see what distance learning is producing from a grade standpoint. If 71% of parents have reported that they want their children back in school four days a week, then please give the customers what they have ordered. Thank you for your time. My next comment is from Timothy Neal. Dear school committee, as a parent of two kids in elementary school, I want to implore you to set a plan to get the kids back to in-person learning. I feel that if school were ending tonight, both of my kids would need to repeat this year as it has been very difficult for them to get all they can out of learning through a screen. I think we can all agree that distance learning is not the long-term solution. So my question is what has taken so long for us to get there? What are the actions you and the administration will be taking to bring them back full time? And when is the date for the return? I understand this is a hard thing to nail down with lots of moving pieces, but to leave a return to school open-ended is not the answer. It only helps lead to delays. I want to know how the students are performing. Has there been a significant drop off as to where the kids are assessing? The administration needs to quantify this all to all of us so we know where we are. As someone whose job is classified as an essential worker and has been working at work for the entirety of the pandemic, I do not understand what the holdup is. My experience working is a place that has seen cases on the rise is that the people getting it right now are the ones not practicing safe habits like wearing a mask and social distancing. That is not what I see when I dropped the kids off at school or when my wife picked them up. The kids and teachers are doing what they have to do to keep themselves safe while at school. I again ask you to get the students back to school so we can hopefully salvage the last half of the year and maybe these kids will be able to get to the next grade. I fear if we do not, they may, many will need to repeat. And my last comment is from Darlene Necco. Dear members of the school committee, I just wanted to let you know that the superintendent made the right decision last week when he switched all schools in Warwick to virtual learning 
and left open the return date for in-person learning. While we all agree that in-person learning is the best mode of instruction, the prevalence of COVID-19 in the community and the lack of social distancing that is occurring and that will continue to occur during the holiday season will necessitate the need to keep school buildings closed to students until at least January 15, 2021, two weeks after New Year's Eve and day when you know that partying will occur. Even the governor and the commissioner of education finally joined reality and have given schools the option of phasing in a return to in-person learning. Please make sure that you continue to monitor your administration and that you give your approval to the date that in-person learning and work resumes. There can be no surprises as there were during the opening of schools for kindergarten classes and then for the rest of the elementary grades and during the will they or won't they grade six antics. You will need to make sure that all rooms are ready and that you have enough staff at all levels if schools are to open properly. Happy holidays to everyone and let's look forward to a very happy, healthy, safe, and sane 2021. That's all I have. Thank you very much. <clears throat> we have no school committee correspondence or donations this evening. So I'll move to letter I recommended actions, approval of minutes of public session, December 1, 2020. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The ayes have it, 5-0. Approval of warrants for December 15, 2020. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The ayes have it, 5-0. Letter J, number four, announcements, personnel as presented. Ms. Ruggieri. Good evening, everyone. Um, tonight we have two retirements. Uh, we have a wise member, Susan Hickey, who's given us 36 years of service. And Deborah Johnson, an elementary teacher at Scott Elementary, effective December 23rd, has 23 years of service. I'd like to wish them both well and thank you for all you've given. I do need a vote for those, please. Move approval. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The ayes have it 5-0. We wish you both all the best in retirement. And thank you for your service combined over 50 years to Warwick. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I have a couple of appointment announcements. Uh, we have a few new employees. We have Lindsay Penta as a clerk at the Career Center, effective January 4th, 2021. And we have Victoria Scott, an elementary teacher at Scott Elementary School, effective January 4th, 2021 as well. We welcome them both to the district. And then we have a change of position for Faith Blanchett, who is now going to be the executive secretary to the executive director of finance and operations. And that is defect, effective December 21st. So good luck to everyone. Thank you. Uh, welcome to, uh, to the, our two new hires. Uh, welcome to the district and to Faith. Congratulations, and if you need any help, there's tons of people that are willing to help. So reach out if you need it. In our last appointments, we have winter coaches um, as presented in your packets. Uh, we do have one um, addendum to add, given the uncertainty with the pandemic and the winter sports season with the interscholastic league, interscholastic league these appointments uh, do come with a disclaimer. Um, so it's the appendix B stipends will be paid to coaches on a prorated basis solely for the number of weeks that the season is active per Rhode Island Interscholastic League and WPS policy. No compensation will be paid for any preseason practice or meetings held outside of the real season duration. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there... Um... We need a vote on the coaches, correct? Or no? You don't need a vote on the vote. appointment. Okay. All right, very good. Thank you, Ms. Ruggieri. Letter K, new business, discussion action, confidential secretary to the executive director of finance and operations. Welcome, Ms. Yeah. Jett. Madam Chair, I'd look for a favorable action on the contract for our discussion in exec session. I'd move approval. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries 5-0.
Discussion update, maintenance reopening task force subcommittee update on cleaning protocols. Mr. Oliver, good evening. Good evening, Madam Chair. Um, I come before you tonight to discuss uh, the results of uh, the facilities task force uh, reconvening uh, to discuss uh, cleaning protocols, staffing, um, and what the needs are for the district uh, and see what adjustments need to be made in order to go back to a full four day in learning, in person learning uh, for the district. Um, the packet I've uh, given you uh, has comments from the uh, task force members, the committee members that uh, with their comments and uh, concerns that they had uh, that need to be addressed. Uh, some of their major concerns were uh, staffing, uh, with us bringing more children back into the building, they are uh, seeing a more of a need for more staffing uh, for cleaning purposes through the course of the day. Uh, other issues that ha had arose were PPE needs for the classroom, uh, things such as plexiglass for students' desk and teachers' desk. Uh, another issue that uh, popped up was the social distancing in a classroom uh, based on uh, enrollment size. Uh, some of the classrooms are a little smaller, uh, so we would probably have to move uh, those classrooms out into a bigger, a larger space to accommodate the needs uh, of social distancing. Uh, another concern the committee had was uh, the communication uh, between departments uh, to notify of its issues and uh, uh, issues of uh, concerns or things that need to be addressed or changed uh, during the course of uh, our sanitizing and disinfecting for the schools. Um, if you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Are there any questions or comments? Madam Chair, if I may. Mr. Testa. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Oliver. Um, I have a couple of questions um, with respect to the concerns. I understand them. Um, the social distancing, uh, I'm curious. I know within the district, there'd be some classrooms that would present a challenge. Um, and I think we've been clear that if we went back four days a week at the elementary level, our distancing wouldn't be six feet. It would be three to six, right? That was what the target was. So um, I think if we have classrooms that once we know how many actual students coming back to be in those classrooms, if they're too small, we would have to secure a larger space. So um, I guess my question here is, is that not a doable thing? Um, um, based on the space we have available in the elementary level, uh, libraries are larger uh, all purpose rooms and things of that nature, we could, we could make arrangements and adjustments in order to accommodate uh, the student need uh, for social distancing. Okay, thank. That was that was my gut feeling, and I, I'm I'm glad you kind of confirmed it. Thank you. The other thing was uh, plexiglass for each student desk. Um, I don't recall that being one of the, and I could be wrong, and, and I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't recall that being one of the PPE items that we had on our list. I remember P, uh, plexiglass for teacher desks, and I thought we had that already taken care of. Um, that, that is correct. Uh, th this is a, a want uh, from the, the, the teachers uh, for a, uh, a safer return uh, for students and teaching staff. Right. And that, that I can understand that. I can absolutely understand that. They, that may not be a possibility, though, um, but I, I would hope that, you know, that, that shouldn't be um, 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 a, a block to returning. I mean, I think we would do everything else. We do the sanitization, the, the hand washing, the masking and the distancing and, and everything else. So um, I think that was all I had. Uh, as far as cleaning staff, um, is, is that, is the concern that let's just for the sake of discussion say everything levels off and actually begins to, to actually tr start to trend downward come after the first of the year. Um, staffing for cleaning um, at the elementary school level? Do you think we would have 
adequate staffing would somehow make that work? Well, like, like you referred to, if, if, if we start to trend in a direction where COVID starts to uh, diminish, um, obviously, obviously we, we would uh, scale back on staffing. Um, obviously, right now, in the present state we're in, uh, staffing is very important, and we may need to increase staff at some point if, if we have to bring everybody back for a full four-day in-person learning. Right. And, and I would, for, for my own edification, I would differentiate full four day in elementary versus full four day for the district. Um, I, I've, I've been very clear. I don't see how we could go four day at the secondary level. I just don't see how that could work. Um, it's convinced me that it's doable. I, I'd be fine with it. Um, I think it is doable at the elementary level, though, but the secondary level really concerns me. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Test. Madam Chair? Stanbrook. I'd just like to expand about um, Mr. Tester's question on the plexiglass for students. So we did order every teacher plexiglass for their desk. And we also ordered um, plexiglass for um, guided reading groups, like small group instruction. So we can put plexiglass in between like students sitting at a round to a small table working with the teacher on certain skills that they need extra support in. So we do have some plexiglass for students when they're in small group instruction. Thank you, Ms. Danbrook. Are there any other questions, comments, concerns, thoughts? Okay. Madam Chair? Yes, sir. Uh, I would like to take this time to thank uh, all the custodial and maintenance staff and secretarial staff and teacher assistants that have helped through this whole process of keeping the buildings uh, safe for our staff and students uh, to return. Um, without them, it would be impossible to undertake this monumental task. I would like to thank them very much. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Oliver. And I think that the committee would, would like to thank them as well. Uh, we owe them a debt of gratitude. They have worked tirelessly to maintain these buildings and to keep them as safe as absolutely possible. And thank God, thank God that you all stepped up and are doing everything you can so that we can have kids and teachers in these buildings. Moving along, number three, discussion action, transportation update, bus schedules for January 2021 reopening. Cam? I got it. Hi, thank you for, for having us. Um, well, Carla and I are here to uh, present some of the issues the district is facing in regards to regular transportation. Um, we're going to go through a quick presentation. So if everybody can hold their questions till the end, we'll have some time for that. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. okay, so um, as you may know, we have 29 large buses in our fleet. And with the COVID guidelines, our capacity is reduced to a third. So that allows us 22 students uh, per bus. Um, we are currently transporting to all non-public schools and we were transporting to the CTC program when it was in person in two sessions. Um, if we transition uh, to full in person, we will be faced with transporting to 19 public and non-public elementaries six public and non-public secondaries using the school committee approved extended walking distance. So the demand for buses will look like this. Isn't it pretty? <laughs> Whoever, you, you folks did a beautiful job on this, this report, this presentation. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It was definitely a group effort. <laughs> well done. All right. So I'm going to explain this these charts, we, we created two of them for you. And this first chart represents the K through 12 busing for the entire district of public and non-public students. And it also includes uh, consideration of hazardous roads. 
All right, so I'm going to explain um, the chart a little more detail. The left side of the chart, it's, it's the number, it says the number of runs. And what that means is, um, so for example, Tollgate buses, Pilgrim buses, they don't just do Tollgate and Pilgrim, they move on to the next uh, schools. They do the middle schools and then they do elementary schools. So the left side is going to represent the number of buses that would be required. And the bottom line shows you a time frame. Now we used 30 minute increments uh, for simplicity. All right. So each of the colors are represented. Okay, so the yellow represents hazardous roads for high school. The pink is hazardous roads for middle school. The blue is hazardous roads for elementary schools. The teal is public high school. The orange is private high school. The green is public middle school. The gold is private elementary school and the red is public elementary. So each of these boxes are represented by a color for the schools and the numbers in it would be the number of buses that would be needed. So if you go to column, the first column in the seven to 730 block, the teal is public high schools, all right? <clears throat> The 35 represents the number of buses that would be needed to get those students to Tollgate and Pilgrim. The box above, the yellow, represents additional buses that would be needed to, be, to consider hazardous roads. And the most important thing on this chart is that big, thick red line in the middle, which is a representation of what we have to work with. And I know sometimes people think with hazardous roads, you know, high school kids, but I can think of three roads that I wouldn't ask an adult to cross, never mind a high school student. Uh, Bald Hill Road, 117, where the uh, on and off ramp for 95, and the on and off ramp of Post Road uh, from 37. So those are three that I can think of off the top of my head. If you look at the second column, it is the greatest challenge of all the time frames, and that would between hazardous roads and all the kids that would need to get to school, we would need a total of 96 buses. On a positive note, we do have some time openings. We have a little bit of time in that 830 block, and we also have a complete open end at the 930 block. So um, we this was the first chart that we showed you. Well, now we want to show you the second chart. It's exactly the same. All the colors are represented here. The only difference is, is we remove the hazardous roads. Okay, if you go back to the first again, it still has the teal representing the high school and we need 35 buses. Again, at the eight o'clock, Again, the biggest challenge, needing 60 buses. And on the right side of the chart, I didn't mention it on the previous, it represents the afternoon. So it's pretty consistent in the afternoon of being short. Um, but again, a lot more time frame is available if we don't look at hazardous roads. I have a lot more room in the 830 block. I have a little bit of room in the nine and I have lots of room in the 930 block. All right, so what does this all mean? <laughs> okay, so um, now that you understand a little of what we're facing, um, here are some of the factors that uh, drive the number of buses that we need in transportation. So things we can't control are the number of schools, the buildings that we have to travel to, um, our COVID restrictions, the 22 per bus, um, there's a national shortage of drivers um, and our hazardous roads. Some, some of the things that, that we can change um, are is the, the walking distance, which we did with the extended um, walking distance. We can change the grades that um, can be transported. Our bell times, we can redistribute uh, the load. As, as Carla mentioned, we do have some blocks of time that are available that would support transportation. 
um, the length of, of a run. So we could put more runs on a bus, creating depot stops. And um, we're looking at how we can increase the number of crossing guards to support those tough areas that we would need students to cross. So uh, considering the items that are, that are in our control, we'd like you to consider um, a few things. So we know we can determine who actually will be riding um, with an opt-in, opt-out survey, which we would only market to qualified riders under the um, extended walking distance. We could limit the ridership so we can eliminate transportation um, for grades six to 12 for public and non-public. Um, we could look at bell times again. So we could see what's available in the slots, see what we can adjust. Um, depot stops, we could reduce the number of stops as well, making um, you know, corner stops farther than they usually are, but in, in the walking distance, considering the walking distance. Um, and then we have been discussing with the traffic division, some options for crossing guards. They are pretty limited as, as we all um, have seen in, with our workforce with that type of position, but we are exploring um, alternate staff options within the district. Okay, so with all of this information, it kind of brought us um, to bring to you and ask you to make a choice of what you would like transportation to do going forward. Um, the first choice would be transporting uh, K through five for public and non-public. Uh, bell times would remain the same and the reduction of students would be uh, by not transporting six through 12 public and non-public. Or the second option of transporting K through 12 public and non-public. But in order to do this, the, la the bottom three things would have to happen. We would definitely need to change bell times. For example, it doesn't mean it's written in stone, it's just an example of changing the middle school bell time to start at 9.30, which would put them at a 4 p.m. ending time. Um, we would need to alleviate the overages with other improvements, like using the opt-out and using stop depots. And we would, the third thing that we would need is non-public concessions. So we would need them to agree to do what everybody else is doing. So rather, we, rather their stops being the same, they would probably go to depots as well. And we might actually reach out to them to see about an opting out as well. So with um, a decision made tonight by school committee, um, transportation would uh, go right into prepping. So we'd be putting together our opt-in, opt-out survey, finding out um, who are those families that we need to send the survey out to. Um, we'd be looking at the depot stops, looking at the geography around each of our schools. Um, weeks two and three, we'd be putting the routes together, making those plans and um, um, turning them in eventually in weeks four and five to first student. So we, we allow first student two weeks prior to the start of any new route. Um, this provides them with time for the drivers to bid on the routes and also to do some dry runs. So we, um, we receive some feedback from them if there are any adjustments that we need to make with any of the um, routes. So well, that's the end of our presentation. And uh, if you have any questions, we'll be happy to answer them for you. Thank you, well done. Thank you. Madam Chair, can I just bring up just a point of clarification? I don't, um, just for the school committee's information, I think that this is a decision that you can make or you can choose to make this an administrative decision, not take action on this tonight and leave it to administration to come up with an appropriate plan of action based on the very well done presentation. I believe that uh, this is uh, a day-to-day, -day, part of a day-to-day -day operations and that administration uh, should make that determination and certainly keep us posted and involved. But I think there are going to need to be uh, a number of meetings with uh, people in the administrators uh, in the private schools uh, and, and things like that. Also, uh, 
discussion, further discussion with the police because we are really going, we really need new, more crossing guards. And um, there hasn't been an increase in a very long time in crossing guards, but it certainly is uh, a huge concern at this point. Uh, so how does, does anyone Madam else Chair. have comments on this? Madam Chair? Certainly. Um, I would just say given the uh, current discussion, um, we would take this back to our team and certainly uh, you know, move forward and make a decision and, and let the committee know uh, what we're doing and why we're doing it. Uh, but certainly as you saw by the timeline, time is of the essence. So we'd have to you know, operationalize this uh, fairly soon, but we will uh, you know, team this and uh, let the committee know wh where we're heading. Thank you. Madam Mr. Chair, if I may. Mr. Tesla. Thank you. Um, Dr. Thornton, you just, I wrote down some questions. You just gave me another one. Um, is it is it um, imperative that if just for the sake of discussion, say we, we go back to school on January 7th, is it imperative that we have transportation in place by then? Do we have to have transportation in place by then? No, you don't. You can keep doing what you're doing, if you will. Uh, but, you know, our plan was to uh, you know, afford parents of our, our younger students uh, transportation, but we could certainly, um, you know, continue what we're doing now. No, it was, it's just it's just my own um, um, edification. I'm just not sure because we haven't been providing transportation, even when we went back into the hybrid model. So, okay. Um, uh, Ms. Machado, on the 20, or, or Ms. McGovern, the 29 buses, that's that's the number of buses that we settled on after we restored some, right? Well, Mr. Ferrucci or someone, didn't we, uh, initially we cut some buses and then didn't we add some back? Yes. And this is that number, right? No. Uh, no. Nope. <laughs> yeah, we actually haven't received the 14 that was approved by school committee due to lack of, the 14 vehicles are in, in existence. We don't have drivers to fill them. Okay, so is it 29 or 43? We have 29 right now in our fleet. That, it, okay, I, I, not, not to parse words, but sure. 29 that we can staff and run? Correct. Okay, so the additional 14 would give us 43 that we, if we could staff and run them, right? Correct. Which changes that, your whole presentation, right? If we had the 43. Correct. Right. Okay, cool. They can only give us information that they currently have. I know. I've and been bus drivers are a premium. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I got Anybody nervous. looking for a job? <laughs> <laughs> be a bus driver, Dave, you'd be great. Uh, my, uh, you mentioned depot stops. Is that just one big bus stop? Yes, one, one, two. Uh, a, a good example of that would be like the Ann and Hope parking lot is not currently being used. Um, and let's say you had 20 kids that were going and 10 were from Norwood and 10 were from Holloman. They are on the same time scale to put one half of the school on one bus, one half of the other, and that could go to two schools, one run. Okay. That, that's, all right. that's interesting to me. I, I kind of like the idea how, how doable it is. That's for you guys to, to figure I, out. I think it's more doable in some areas than it will be in others. Yeah, depending on the hazardous roads too, right? Because that, that's going to have an impact as well. Um, changing bell times, Dr. Thornton, um, a couple of things came to mind to me. Is that a contractual issue for teachers? I don't have that in front of me, Mr. Testa, but I know at the secondary, I believe the bell times are in the contract. So yes, it would be. Yes. Um, also, there are other factors in terms of uh, changing you know, bell times, having students arrive home at, you know, four o'clock, you know, versus what they were coming home, you know, much earlier can, can be a challenge. Um, yeah, so it isn't the contract and changing times that much can, can be uh, difficult. Yeah, and that would also impact, even if it's at the middle school, it would impact sports, it would impact clubs, right? And all that other stuff too, so, okay. Um, and then as far as the crossing guards, I obviously, I mean, I've, I've said it publicly several times. I think it's something we can, we can explore. When a bus is $85,000 to run, um, even if we were able to, to co-fund crossing guard positions with the police department to help bring the, the pay up to a point where someone wouldn't mind doing it. It's, what is it, a five-hour job 
five hour a day job, um, you know, for $15 an hour, I'm not going to do it. Um, so maybe between the traffic division and, and the school department, maybe we, we just co-fund them and, and make it, you know, it's a marketplace. So maybe we, we arrive at a rate that makes it attractive to some people. And if we can pick up some crossing guards, um, that would help um, quite a bit, actually, I think. So you guys have your work cut out for you and uh, good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Would anyone else like to speak on this issue? Uh, I'll speak. Ms. Cobb. Uh, I just want to um, agree with you for the fact that I do think this is an administration task and uh, I have faith that they'll do what's going to be best for our district. And I was also impressed with your graphs and your presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Cobb. Anyone else? Moving on. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. You have your work cut out for you, as Mr. Tesla said. <laughs> we can help, let us know. Discussion update, high school survey results. Mr. McCaff. Welcome. Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the school committee. Uh, this afternoon, I, I sent you the uh, survey results as of this, this afternoon. Uh, you should have received it in your email about an hour ago. We had 667 people respond to our survey out of a possible 2,357 for a response rate at this time of 28%, which I think is, is a bit low, a little bit disappointed in that response rate. And you can see the response response is split between each school. They're both hovering around between 45 and 55%. Uh, so it's kind of evenly split between each, each school that had responded. In the next slide, you'll see a breakout of, it's kind of evenly, uh, the responses are uh, evenly spread between ninth grade through 12th grade with uh, 12th grade having the lowest response rate. Uh, of the 667 responses, uh, there's 33% that would be interested in continuing full distance learning at this time. There's 19% that would be interested in the hybrid model and 48% that would be interested in returning to four day in-person learning. So that's where we're at on the survey at this time. Uh, obviously the pandemic de determines uh, when we return and at what level, but this is the uh, response from the community and where they're at, at, where they're at. Any questions on the survey? Are there any questions? Thank you. First of all, um, thank one, you. Yeah. Sure, Mr. Yeah. Mr. Testa. Yeah. Ms. Compton. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Ms. Compton. Well, I just have one question. Um, it's a little disappointing on how many responded. How many should have responded a roundabout number? I don't expect you to have the exact number. I, I would think it should have been similar to the middle school where we were pushing up or up up around 65 to 70% response rate at this time. Given the time that the survey has been out there, I don't know if it's the holidays or uh, coming or the transition back uh, on what's happening, but it, I, I think it should have been in, in the 60s, maybe 65% at this point. Right, right. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Cobb. Did Mr. Tesla. Thank you. Uh, Mr. McCaffrey, um, are we, are, are the principals going to continue to reach out uh, like we did at the elementary level, continue to reach out to the high school families? Yes, we know exactly who has responded based upon uh, information we receive. So we know who hasn't responded. So we can follow up on that just to see how close we can get to uh, having most people respond. Yeah, I mean, you said it was a 28% response respondent rate. Was it 20? Right now, right now we have 2,357 high school students registered in Warwick. And we had uh, 20, a 28% response rate. So... Okay, so was a response each student or is a response each family? It's for each student. We go back and we, when there are two contacts, we make sure that we're only counting okay. it once and not twice. Okay. 
Thank you. Yeah, we just have to keep reaching out to them and, and keep um, and then just keep reiterating how important it is for us because I think 28% right now that's too low of a, of a sample. So okay. it's low and it's also necessary. The information is necessary to properly schedule the students right. in whatever model we, we, we move towards as things change. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. McCaffrey. Madam Chair. Mr. Cornell. Yeah, I just want to point out that um, most of the results um, received were actually, um, seems like they're from Tollgate. Meanwhile, Pilgrim has a higher population, much higher population of students. So that means P Pilgrim is not being well, accurately represented in this figure. So I just wanted to point it out. Sure, Mr. Cornell, it's actually, it's, it's, it's almost equal at this point. Pilgrim has 1,212 students and Tollgate has 1,145 students. Uh, with the decisions you made over the past couple of years of transitioning the career students over to Tollgate, it's brought the enrollment down at, at, at Pilgrim by a couple hundred. It's it's actually helped increase the enrollment at Tollgate. So they, they're almost Thank they're you. within uh, they they they're within what what's that? Uh, sixty seven students is a sixty seven student difference as of today, this afternoon. Uh, thank you for that, Mr. Caffrey. That's very good information to know. Anyone else? Okay. Thank you, Mr. McCaffrey. Please keep us updated if you get any more information. You're welcome. And discussion update middle school survey results, Mr. McCaffrey. On the middle school survey results, I have nothing <laughs> else to add this evening. We discussed them last time. Thank you. Are there any comments or questions with regard to the middle school? Being none, we'll move on to number six. Discussion action, kindergarten, grade five, four day a week update. Ms. Danbrook, please. Welcome. Yes, Madam Chair, members of the school committee, as you know, all of our elementary schools have plans in place to return four day in person or four day distance learning. Originally, we discussed the possibility of returning on um, the week of January 4th. The state um, school calendar has been revised. Before I continue, I will refer to Dr. Thornton to explain the revision of the calendar. Thank you. Um, if you read the paper uh, last night or I think on, on the news channels, you saw some information from the commissioner of education talking about um, the uh, phasing out and phasing back in of the calendar. Um, first, the phase out around, I believe, 1221, going distance learning. And then coming back, uh, Rye was suggesting, not, not mandating, that schools phase back in anywhere from January 7 to be, being fully back in by January 15. So that seems to be, you know, the discussion point. You know, how and when do we phase back in and uh, per our last meeting, we did say, um, you know, whenever that date would be, we would certainly backwards map for a period of time for special education to go first, right, for our last conversation. But then, you know, we would be, uh, you know, phasing in, you know, our goal being the four day uh, a week elementary and uh, to me, the, uh, the hybrid um, at the middle and high. So I, I would say in talking to other superintendents, um, I've heard a lot of conversations around, uh, you know, that January 11 time frame being uh, kind of a, a kickoff point. So I think there's still some uh, discussion on you know, how that may uh, roll out, but uh, it is uh, starting at or around January 7 to go back. Yes, Madam Chair, if I could continue. Please. So our new date is date, I'm sorry, is the week of January 11th. Um, I understand that the COVID positivity rate um, plays a role in this decision. So when we begin the opening process, it will be a staggered opening process beginning with special ed. And then like we did before, we bring like the K and one and two and three um, because there'll be many more students returning um, to the school. And we wanna make sure we have safe protocols and procedures in place and the parents understand them. So um, every meeting that we have, um, I'll be updating you on um, how we're going to proceed and when we're going to proceed with this opening. Thank you. 
Madam, Madam Chair, I have a question, but I'm not sure when the appropriate time is to ask it because it's about the calendar, but it's not specific. Well, I guess in, in a sense it is related to elementary. Um, and I guess it's- Please ask it now. Thank you. Um, it's either to Dr. Thornton or, or Ms. Danbrook. With the latest start date, um, what about the end of the school year? Because if we start later, we'll be in school until July 1st or you know early July. So is, is Ride going to just- going to just um, push back, you know, just forgive those those days and we'll just end around the same time. Um, because I'm thinking of high school seniors, I'm thinking of, um, you know, graduation, I don't think will be impacted at all, right? Because that's kind of set in stone. So I'm just curious how this delayed start will affect the end of school too. I haven't seen uh, a definitive uh, schedule on that. So I'd have to wait and see where the ride gives us. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Mr. Cornell. Um, Dr. Thornton, what if we don't comply with this calendar on the set dates? Right, the calendar as usual with RIDE, I don't see this as a mandate or a directive. It's a recommendation, a suggestion, right? Just as it was when we uh, started um, in the fall. So I think this is RIDE's best thinking as of right now, middle of December, as far as trying to get folks back in school in January. So I, I don't think you will um, you know, hear the word directive from the state. It's a recommendation, it's a suggestion. Thank you for the clarification. And I think that's important for a community to know that um, although I made that recommendation, it'll be the school committee to decide what time um, everyone goes back. And, um, and like, we will have to face people back, but like, it most likely will not be by the dates by that calendar. It'll take a while, especially for in-person, because first it'll have to be a hybrid and then go into person. We just can't go from district learning just to sending all people back and miss the two weeks. It just, it can't be done. So just want to let the community know, like, although that calendar's out there, it's not exactly what work is going to do. Madam Chair. Dr. Thornton. Um, I would say, you know, when the committee does make that effort to, uh, to go back, to me, my best thinking in Ms. Danbrooks would be not to uh, venture back to hybrid for elementary, but to go four days a week. If you wanna phase it for grade levels, that certainly, I think, um, ha has some value, you know, K1, K12. But I think, uh, you know, at this point in time, we, the air purifiers are in, we've done the work. Uh, at some point in time, you have to fish and cut bait. And to me, it's January, you have to go. But um, I think phasing it makes sense. Uh, but, you know, I mean, as some of the public comment mentioned, we do have to, uh, you know, 70% of our, our customers want to go back four days a week. So I, I think we have to be, be mindful of that. Yeah, Thank and, you. And I'm not just talking about elementary. I'm also talking about secondary because, like, we can't go full in person for secondary at this point because we're just not prepared for it. Like, that would have to start a hybrid mall. So when I said everyone back, I meant both elementary and secondary. Like, as the calendar is looking there, like saying, just send everyone back at this time, but we just can't do that for both elementary and secondary. So that's right. why I mainly meant. Yeah. Madam Chair? Certainly. Mr. Yeah. Uh, uh, to your point, Mr. Cornell, yeah, I, I, I do agree with you. Uh, it's elementary four days. That's the conversation. The second conversation around the state is um, hybrid, middle high. So I have not heard uh, many going uh, full you know, four and five days a week, middle high. It's the hybrid. Thank you, Superintendent. Are there any other questions or any other discussion? Being none, we'll move on to secondary reopening. Update, Mr. McCaffrey. Madam Chair, members of the school committee, uh, Dr. Thornton has updated you with the best thinking at this point for the reopening in January, as well as RIDE's uh, tentative calendar for, for January. Uh, I would share with you at this time, the uh, building administrators at both the high school and middle level are working uh, very hard on establishing uh, reopening plans that will keep students safe and provide them with a high quality education. Thank you, Mr. McCaffrey. And um, for some reason, uh, Friday the 15th is for, I guess, ride a return date. And that is a Friday, so I would say that um, we should probably, if we phase it in, we should probably look at uh, the week of the 17th. 
Are there any other comments or questions? Being none, I will move on. Number eight, change order construction, electric power install for purifiers. Good evening, Madam no, Chair. Good evening, everyone. Um, uh, this is a change order for the uh, purifier electrical work. Uh, Commercial Electric ran three crews as opposed to the two other companies that ran one each. Um, so they uh, obviously did uh, more schools, more rooms, more uh, outlets. Um, so they <coughs> have come up forward with a change order. This stays within the, uh, the budget when you factor all three companies in. So uh, I request approval. I move approval. Second. Discussion? There being none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. Thank you. Thank you. Number nine, discussion action, contract award, school lunch program, delivery truck repairs. Ms. Machado. So we're here to ask for approval. Um, we have some repairs on our box truck. Uh, Mr. Oliver can speak to them specifically if there are any questions on that. Are there any questions or discussion? There being none, I move approval. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0, thank you. Thank you. Number 10. Discussion action contract award special education contract uh, substitutes for hearing and speech services. Dr. Conley, good evening. Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the school committee. Um, we, this is a request. We need a substitute for one of our teacher of the deaf positions. It's a very difficult position to fill, um, which is leading us to um, arrange this contract with the Clark School for the Deaf. I'm anticipating it. this will be at least two months, perhaps longer, and I respectfully request your approval. Thank you, Dr. Conley. I move approval. Second. Discussion? There being none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 5-0, thank you. Uh, Madam Chair, I, um, I think we might have lost Judy. Looks like she's- I'm frozen. right here. Oh, never mind. Discussion number 11, discussion action, contract award construction, toll gate electric repairs, outdoor scoreboard, and Jim Backboards, Mr. Gothberg. Good evening again. Um, <clears throat> this is for work that uh, needs to be done at Tollgate High School. Um, the rework of the underground electrical and panel that feeds the new brand new scoreboard. And uh, in the gym, um, the motors were replaced that uh, lift the backboards. However, there was substantial electrical work that needed to be reconfigured and redone to make them operate. Um, Mr. Ferrucci and I were able to find some money in the uh, 2005 bond to cover this. Uh, so we mo have moved it forward and seek approval. Well, it certainly needs to be done. Um, I move approval. Second. Discussion. Madam Chair, I have one question. Mr. Testa. Thank you. Um, Mr. Ferrucci or Mr. Ricks, we bought a, this is the new outdoor scoreboard for Tollgate. We, we also got one for Pilgrim too, right? Correct. That's correct. Pilgrim should be installed any any uh, time. All right. So, Mr. Gothberg, we don't have any electrical issues with the Pilgrim underground because that one's as old as. Uh, I I have not been informed of any issues. Uh, I believe the other one operated until it failed. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any other discussion, Mr. Adams? You let up. That's why. Oh. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you. Again. Five zero. Thank you very much. And thank you for finding the funds. Discussion action, bid award, athletic uniforms. Mr. Ricks, good evening. Good evening, Madam Chair and committee. I uh, hope everybody's well. I uh, bring before you today our uniform purchase for this uh, 20. 2020 21 sport season. Uh, 
we try to replace the uniforms on a five to six year cycle. In some cases, it's even been longer, uh, depending on how they hold up. And um, so I brought before you the uniforms that need to be replaced this year. They were budgeted for, and I seek your approval. Thank you, Mr. Ricks. I move approval. Second. Discussion. Is there any discussion? There being none. Oh, I have a question. Uh, what teams need new uniforms this year? Well, um, to, both both schools. They're, they're both at high schools right now. The middle both schools. Schools. Oh, um, baseball, um, lacrosse, and um, baseball, lacrosse, basketball. No. Uh, yes, correct. Basketball. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yes. Just curious. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> there being no further questions, all in favor? Aye. 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 The ayes have it. Motion carries 5 0. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Discussion action bid award, Walk Area Career and Tech EMT Training Services. Mr. McCaffrey. Madam Chair, members of the school committee, American Safety Programs and Training was the only bid at the specifications for the AM, EMT training for the students in the health occupations program. It's 180 hours of instruction with credentials upon completion of, of the program. I ask that you vote, pass, vote for this uh, initiative. Thank you, Mr. McCaffrey. Approval? Second. Discussion, Mr. McCaffrey. The uh, 180, 180 hours uh, would give our students an EMTA certificate or license? A license, yes. License, yes. And um, so they will, they will take the state exams, both uh, practical and written? Yes. Before they graduate. Very yes. Good. That's excellent. Okay. Any other discussion or questions? Madam, Madam Chair, I have a question for Mr. McCaffrey. Yes. Thank you. Mr. McCaffrey, if, if I remember correctly, this is the same company we use when we, since we started the program, right? This is the same as last year. Okay. I, I believe we started this discussion three years ago, yourself and I, and, and, the, and the health teacher, health occupations teacher, and it's the, now we're in the second year of the program. Yeah. How many, um, how many kids are in it? Or kids? How many students are in it? We will have approximately 10 seniors that will take this program. If, if they are on track to graduate on time and are in good standing. If they're not in good standing, they won't be participating. Okay, thank you. Yeah, now I know uh, I have friends who are firefighters and uh, that company has a very good reputation. So um, I'm pleased that the program um, is going along well. So excellent, thank you. Thank you. And you can't even think about getting into a fire program now without an EMTA. Uh, so uh, it's, it's very rigorous, uh, but it's a great program. Any other questions or comments? Call a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. 5-0. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. McCaffrey. In accordance with school committee policy, administration will be presenting those expenses ranging from $1,000 to $4,999 on a consent agenda item. If a school committee member wishes to address any individual item noted, they may do so by referencing the index number of a particular document for an individual item to be removed from the consent agenda and to be addressed separate and individually from the agenda. Is there anyone on the committee that would like any item removed this evening from the consent agenda? There being none, I move approval Second. of contract awards one through nine. Second. Discussion? No, no discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it, five zero. Thank you very much. At this point in time, our next monthly school committee meeting is Tuesday, January 12th, 2021. We will not have a meeting next week. We do not know if we will have a meeting the following week. Um, it will be posted 
uh, future uh, special meetings will be posted. Uh, this time I would like to wish everyone <clears throat> a very safe, remember social distancing, staying in your family and things like that. A very safe, joyful and blessed Christmas. And let us hope for a brand new, healthy, open 2021. There being no further business before this committee, I ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Merry very Christmas, much. everyone. Merry Christmas. Hi, everybody. Happy holidays. holidays. Good to see everyone. Thank you. Come back. Come back soon, Aubrey. I, I, I took, Bill told you they.